Hello, Matt Heaton here. I'm going to talk to you about a couple of, uh, of partial voicing ideas, uh, things that I use a lot when I'm back in tunes. Um, so this is in standard tuning. Okay, you could apply these ideas to other tunings, but this is just so for the fingering, this is standard. So one thing that I do a lot is I take, um, I'll take a shape like this, right? Your big, big old G bar chord, which I would never in my life play. Um, and I'll just pick the, the good notes out of it. Um, so the root, I'm playing with my first finger down here. Can you see this okay? And then I'm playing on the third fret as well, playing the, um, the fifth, my middle finger. And then my third finger is going to play the third down on the um, third string here. So again, looking at that, I'm just picking, if I were playing the big chord, I'm just playing this one, this one, and then the one that's under that knuckle. But the nice thing is that I'm not, I'm muting the fifth string. That's not getting played. The D is open. The top one is getting muted. Okay? So, why is that so nice? That's so nice because you can move it up to here, to D, which is where I use it a lot, right? So instead of hearing this for a D chord, which is kind of, to me, is always kind of thin, this, you have a D here, and you have a D here, and, and the way that they, and this one is kind of tubby sounding, and this one has got, you know, the brighter open thing, so when you combine them, they make kind of a cool uh, effect. It makes a bigger sound. So, okay, so I'm up here. And then if I want to go to a G chord from here, uh, instead of changing, like, you know, going, doing a big change, I'm just going to play my pinky on the 12th fret. Notice I'm keeping this one down because I know I'm going to go right back there. Okay, so what that's like, it's like a sus4 chord, if you're doing it down here, but up here. And if you want to have the open E, it kind of sounds nice if you like it. Or you can mute it easily. So I'm using, I'm not playing the whole four chord, I'm only kind of hinting at it. I've got, you know, two notes of the four chord. I've got the, the D and the, um, the G which is the root of the four chord. And then if I really needed the third, I could, I could do that. But a lot of times I'll just go. Right? So then if I need a five chord, the shape I'm using is based on a D over F sharp. So you know this, this chord, okay, you got your D, and then there's the one where you like do that or refinger it. So you're essentially playing this note down here, okay? Again, I'm going to sort of get rid of the extraneous stuff, and I'm just going to play. So that's a D chord with an F sharp in the bass. Okay, follow that. That, we move all the way up to the, um, this is the ninth fret. And I'm muting pretty much everything. I'm muting... And you switch back and forth. So this is the one chord, and this is the five chord. So a, G, a, a D chord and an A chord. So D, G, A, D. Why does that sound good? It sounds nice because you can leave that open D ringing through all of it. Right? Uh, and, and you're not moving real far. You're not going like... You know... Which is a little clunky because everything's moving this way. It's a little smoother. 
And the nice thing is that you can use these elsewhere. Uh, this is a, so this shape, the uh, A over C sharp could also be a G over B. So you go. And if you're, you know, climbing up the neck. And then this, this little, and this trick, you could do it here. Then it becomes G, C, D, G. You could do it on your C chord. So it's C, F, G, C. So this, this thing, the switch that's hard for people is going from here to here. Basically these two fingers switch places and you go down a fret. And then, you know, from there the sky is the limit, you know, D, C, G over B, F over A, G, D over F sharp. And then you want to get fancy, you can start doing minor stuff. But that's for another day. So uh, I, hopefully that helps, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.